are Game Changing Dads, we know how tough it can be to stay motivated to be a good husband and a good father. That's why each week we bring you honest, real discussions about how to lead, love, and live. If you're looking for ways to take charge of your leadership role at home, visit GameChangingDad.com to find helpful tips on how to stay focused on your number one priority as you maneuver through the demands of your career. On today's show, I will be interviewing Travis Hodge. Travis and I are friends over at Journey Church, and unfortunately, I do not know this guy that well, so I'm excited to hear about his background in football and get to know his family a little bit better, and my introduction today is called Travis is Everywhere, because this guy is a mover and shaker. All pro dads events, he is there. Men's fraternity, he is there and leading. Christian Men's Association, he is there. Financial Peace University, he is there and leading. On top of all that, Travis is a two-time All-State linebacker and has one state championship under his belt. He was also a high school football coach for 12 years, where he also teach for 12 years. He is currently a financial advisor. Travis has been married for 10 years and has three awesome kids. And he is definitely a game-changing dad. Travis, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Ray. I really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Well, we're excited. I'm excited to, you know, like I said, to get to know you a little bit better. We run into each other at church. It's usually like, hey, what's up? And boom, kids are off to, you know, wherever. And it's, it's just chaos. And I totally get that for Sunday mornings. Absolutely. So I'm excited to, you know, hear about your story. So let's do this. Let's start out with a quick snapshot of who you are from where you were born, kind of growing up in whatever area you grew up in, go through your high school, your football, and uh, your family currently, and uh, what you're doing for a job today. Okay. Yeah, um, was born and raised in Jacksonville. Uh, football was really my life from the time I was seven years old. That's what really led to my career in coaching. It was really all I knew. Um, other than my mom being in my life, it was the you know other consistent coaches kind of helped raise me growing up. But I uh, grew up on the west side of Jacksonville, um, went to the bowl school, was fortunate enough to be a three-year starter there and played for legendary coach Corky Rogers and uh, beat Anquan Bolden uh, in the state championship. So I like to tell people Anquan Bolden has a Super Bowl ring, but he does not have a 1998 state championship <laughs> ring. <laughs> awesome. Um, so was fortunate enough from there to sign a fo uh, full football scholarship to the Citadel. Um, loved my time there, loved Charleston, and graduated, and four days later was coaching high school football, and, and you really thought that was going to kind of be my career. And then men's fraternity got a hold of me, and a uh, guy got a hold of me and met my wife. You know, we were married um, in 2007, and God just really started to turn my heart towards marriage and uh, understanding what – financial peace really does for people um, and just the peace of mind it gives them and how much it helped our marriage and God just kind of gave us an opportunity to step into that and that's you know what we that's kind of our journey so awesome awesome so, so everyone has their you know their journey regarding sports so I was hockey I remember growing up in Philadelphia with the Philadelphia Flyers and I was probably nine ten years old so you know why the uh, you know why the introduction to football? Was there someone in your life that you kind of looked up to, or was it just a sport to to play back then? Uh, just the area we grew up in, it, it was just kind of what everybody did. It was the most popular sport. It was I played at a very prestigious uh, youth league at that time, which was Lakeshore. It's where Tim Tebow played. So that you know, um, but through three years there, the team I was on went fifty-two and zero. We didn't lose a game for three years. Um, so it was a big deal and winning was a big deal. And, you know, it was just something that I kind of attached to early on with some of the things I was dealing with in my youth. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely love that. And you say, you know, especially leading uh, men's fraternity and uh, financial peace, uh, you know, do you have a um, kind of a God story or have you always been the church going guy? You know, a, and a lot of you know my story. I mean, it took me 30 years to really figure out who God was. Right. And I literally just sat there and this was 20 years ago going, wow, relationship. So I can have a relationship. I mean, what's your God story out there? Absolutely. Well, I was saved at 16. I was a junior in high school. Um, 
you know, but like most 16 year olds, if there's no guidance, no leadership, then you, you go to what you know. And unfortunately, the habits I knew weren't honoring God. But it was really when I got into coaching and when I got to Barsham Trail and I was with Daryl Sutherland, who's the head coach there, and he started to mentor me. And then I went to Madison County and Mike Coe, who's the head coach there, was been a great mentor, as well as uh, Steve McCard, who's the FCA rep. But then really things great turned around for me, I mean, dramatically when I took uh, men's fraternity. And the lesson, and you'll remember this, where it was, there was a lesson where it taught about die to self. And it really just hit me that day, like, you know what, this this isn't about you. And I, you know, I'll tell you, I was a very arrogant um, playing ball growing up that I thought a lot was about me, or it should have been, just being honest. Uh, so getting that message that day and receiving that really just made me realize that this is all for a much, much bigger purpose and a much bigger God that, you know, really we should be honored to have the opportunity to um, follow and represent him. Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that's a great point. So, and it's funny, you come off such a humble guy with a, just, you know, our interaction at church. And, you know, when you say, you know, a little arrogant and things like that, uh, you know, as you were coaching in high school, um, you know, how was that transition from playing to coaching? Uh, you know, did you see a lot of that in the high school kids? Were you able to kind of teach them that, uh, you know, it, it's, hey, you know, to be arrogant and cocky is one thing, but to be a team player and, you know, play together as a team is a whole nother story. And you were there for 10 years. So I would imagine yeah, you had a big, big impact. Right. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of it was I would really try to relate what they were doing as as young men and, give, and sacrificing a lot for the bigger picture, sacrificing for their teammates. You know, they had a job to do and their teammate relied on them. You know, well, what do we do as fathers every day, right? And as husbands, we, you know, we do the same thing. It's not about us. It's we have to make sacrifices. If we have to make ourselves uncomfortable for our wife to be a little more comfortable, our kids will be a little more comfortable. That's what we have to do. So really, we tried to instill and plant a lot of seeds into those young men into understanding that, you know, one day you will this will really resonate with you as you're a husband and a, and a dad and things like that. And it's been cool that, you know, I've coached kids now that are dads and that, that are husbands. And, you know, they reach out and they say, coach, man, so much of what you said, you know, I didn't understand then, but I get now and I'm raising my kid that way. So that's been really a uh, unique and, you know, neat relationship to see it come forth. Absolutely. That is awesome. No, that's great advice. Now, how, you know, how does one get started? And I know my journey, but, you know, you leading, you know, men's fraternity, uh, financial peace, was it just, you know, had the, had the right people in front of you at the time? Was there mentorship or they just said, hey, man, you know, your coaching background, man, you would be great. Or was that just God kind of knocking on your heart saying, hey, Travis, it's time to, uh, you know, stand up and lead a little bit? Well, that's a great question, first of all. Um, I think a lot of it was I was so used to leading young men uh, as a high school coach and being in, you know, that's just my, I kind of have that collaborative spirit. Uh, that's how, what since I was seven, that's all I've known is, you know, being in groups and locker rooms and being on coaching staffs and things like that. And even in my financial planning business now, I work in a team with two other guys that, you know, I've done it for a long time. So that's just where my strength is and where I operate and, and it goes back to the stuff we enjoyed about athletics. It's that camaraderie. It's that knowing you got guys that got your back when life gets tough, that you can make a phone call to two or three guys. And, you know, they're going to tell you the right things and they're going to tell you biblical things. And I knew that the relationship is would be built uh, within those, that especially the men's fraternity atmosphere. And then, you know, the cool thing about Financial Peace University is me and Amy lead that together. So she really is able to bring – you know, a little different perspective than I do with me being the financial advisor guy, you know, but she's able to bring a different side of that. So it was really just asking God, I, I'm a simple guy. And I try to just say, God, what do you want me to do next? Cause I'm not smart enough if I try to figure it out on my own. So I just, um, life's a lot better when you're following him. And that's really what we try tried to do. Absolutely. And I love that. I love the whole team camaraderie. I love the, uh, you know, a lot of the things we do in our mastermind groups, we talk about accountability in action. And when you have that accountability, you know, you know, 
pre-Jesus for me, you know, 30 and under, I mean, yeah, I was on teams, but you know, the accountability factor, you know, it's that like, you know, you are who you hang around with. Yeah. Absolutely. And my, and my story was, it just, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say it's that typical hockey player background, but you know, <laughs> when I came to terms and I remember 31 years old taking my, actually not 31. So I guess I was maybe 41 years old, taking my three-year-old at the time, Jay's into a locker room and forgetting. Cause I mean, I was, you know, I was tapping into church. I was tapping into Bible study and don't get me wrong, you know, being a brand new Christian, I, I, I'm still considered that, but I remember the first Bible study and I'm like, you know, I, I grew up Catholic and I, that's as far as I'm going to go with this conversation, but right. <laughs> we weren't encouraged to read the Bible. So, you know, and I remember hearing a Bible study and I'm like, right. why? So getting back, getting back to my walking into a locker room after so many years being away from it and having my three-year-old there. And I remember getting in there and I was with a group of guys I really didn't know. And literally within three minutes, and I'm like listening to this. This was my group, right? And I, and I, oh, yeah. I was embarrassed, and I, I didn't know these guys. I'm like, whoa, whoa, three year old. I just kind of pointed down. They kind of looked at me and just kept going. I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah. But you know, to be accountable, to be in the right hands, uh, men's fraternity. I started last year, and uh, you know, for for where Dale Prax was teaching, I remember going in there, and it, it's, it's, you know, it's threatening. I mean, I, yes. I don't know. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Good. I mean, you know, how can you explain yes. oh, like yeah. a men's fraternity when you're so, <laughs> you know, we're men, we're full of pride, you know, we don't share our feelings. We're, so, we're supposed to be these, but it's actually the complete opposite. You know, when you share your heart and you share Absolutely. with each other, that's how you get ahead. I mean, did you ever come to, I guess, a breaking point in your life where, man, just you know, yes, God's working on me, but I need to share this with someone else. Did you have that point in your life where it's like, it's just time? Yeah, it was really year one in men's fraternity. Um, mm. When I first moved here, I jumped right in, connected with the Journey Church right away in 2011, jumped right into men's fraternity and uh, really just turned my whole life. A lot of my past was you know, some things with my biological father, and I was very, very blessed and fortunate that my stepfather uh, stepped up at a very young age for me, and uh, I, I've called him dad. He's the best granddad on this planet. Um, but, you know, I really had to, God showed me, stop trying to be better than your biological father and start following the plans of your heavenly father. And man, when I was hit with that, it really just, that's when everything changed. And it's funny, because it's like, my brother-in-law is probably my best friend now, and he said to me, man, he said to me one day, Ray, he goes, you just seem to kind of always have it together. And I'm like, no, buddy, not at all. But I sit with a group of men every week that helped me keep it together. And, you know, that's where I started realizing as I built the relationships and kind of connected with some friends that, um, man, every man out there needs men's fraternity, a place where you can have conversation about your struggles as a husband, about your struggles as a father. and you're not going to be looked down upon because of that. You know, guys are going to encourage you. And, and that's a big deal to have that. And that's where things really changed for me was that year one. I mean, what, what, what's the opposite end of that? And what I mean by that, let's say you have, you know, men's fraternity where you get a guy that's not opening up. And every once in a while, we'll have a mastermind group where we have an individual sitting in the back. You know, you coaching for so many years, you being involved in the church groups, you know, what kind of advice can you, can you give to the guy that's sitting in the back? You know, we don't want to judge. We'll, right. we'll have a conversation. But when you're asking questions and not getting answers or getting one worded answers, I mean, in that scenario, and, and I would imagine I've ran into it plenty of times and you have oh, too. Yeah. I was yeah. that guy at one time. So I totally dig it. But you know, yeah. what, you know, what do you do from there for that individual? Is there any kind of advice or any kind of, you know, where would you lead that person that doesn't you know, want to open up? Right. That's a, that's a tough question and that's a tough situation. And I think one thing I learned in kind of coaching was, you know, first and foremost, anytime you have the opportunity to lead people, I feel like people will not let you lead them unless they know two things about you. One, that you love them and care about them. And that two, you're going to listen to them. 
So I think a lot of times it's finding some one-on-one -on -one time with that individual and just listening and hearing their story. Um, and then just asking them, you know, I'm a very blunt guy. I'll just, I kind of lay things out there and I say, Hey, do you, you know, can we help you in this group? You know, what, what can we do in this group to, you know, so it, so you feel more comfortable and things like that and just being open and honest. Cause ultimately that's what we're all looking for is people we can be open with and honest with and, you know, share our feelings and, you know, and have some accountability and have some wisdom and experiences spoken into us. Absolutely. I mean, just awesome advice, you know, maybe taking them out of the group, having a cup of coffee, having lunch and just having right. that discussion. I mean, that, that is huge. Uh, it also, it's funny. I, I watched Dale work, uh, love Dale for year yeah. one that I was involved Great, in. Yeah. And, you know, with me running, you know, coaching programs and the masterminds, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to love you. Don't get me wrong, but I'm also going to lean into a, a lot. Right. And, you know, I remember him up a couple of times and I'm just like, you know, whoa. And I was like, I, I, I don't want to start picking people out, but you know, I, as much as I want to lead over there, I'd be afraid of a guy saying, no, no, stop, stop asking me questions, dude. Right. I'd be afraid I would be, yeah, I would be that. The, yeah. Yeah. It's you know. tough. I mean, I'm actually leading a, a men's fraternity group really outside of the church and you know, it's going to be challenging and I'm just praying for God's hand to be upon it. But, um, you know, men need this. I mean, this, yeah. this thing, I mean, you know how it's changed marriages in our church and I, I know what it did for me. So that's kind of my next adventure. And the, and the reason I say that, like, you know, the tough love, if you want to call it, you know, I had a friend in North Carolina, you know, I, I was a brand new Christian and this guy was just, you know, unbelievable believer i mean he went through you know his four-year-old passing that was actually jay's good friend i mean just oh, wow. the things that he dealt with uh you know and they had some diseases in the family with the other children but this guy was just man just a rock i mean god was it was just unbelievable the foundation he had and i mean literally just every like hey man this is going on hey you need to be here i mean he leaned on me so much where i want right. to give that back to other men you know, yep. through his example, and we all have people like that in our life. And that's why, that's why I love what you're doing at the church, because I look up to you and I'm like, like I said earlier, man, I'm just trying to keep up to you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're in a little different season right now. Our kids are kind of on the verge of getting ready to enter sports and hobbies and things like that, because they're eight, five and two. And um, so, you know, I don't know how long this these type seasons will last, because a lot of this stuff will have to, you know, be, we'll have to have our full attention on them. But you know, me and my wife kind of got a saying when we get too comfortable, we got to mix things up. So uh, we feel like when you're uncomfortable, you grow. That's one Absolutely. of the things that, you know, I learned from Coach Rogers playing for him. Um, that's just the way we try to push each other, push each other all the time. And I think that keeps us close. It keeps us communicating and things like that. So, yeah, I think that I think that's huge. And give me give me a quick story of how you and your wife met, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, um, she was uh, kind of crazy. She was a West Side girl from the West Side of Jacksonville. We she cheered at Lee, and our cheered at Lee went to Lee High School, but was also a Lakeshore girl. And we just had some mutual friends, and she tried to actually hook me up with one of her other friends. And we just, you know, I knew very early that I'd never met anyone like her, and I, I had to. God kind of let me know real quick. All right, you don't want to screw this up. You better start following me because you don't deserve this one. So, awesome. and that was really it. Um, but it was one of those I knew. So, okay, okay. awesome, love awesome. it. So, how about let's let's get to your kids for the next couple of minutes, and then we'll go through our um, you know we'll go through our last questions there. So, tell me you know give me some good examples of you know leading your kids, uh, you know uh, the Christian road, uh, the the God loving father that you are. Uh, just, you know, just, just some ideas for the guys out there that maybe aren't sure, or they're maybe, uh, you know, new to the walk or maybe don't, don't have the walk right now. Man, that is a great question, Ray. And so one that I really struggled with is, and I kind of had to look in the mirror cause I, I am leading so many other things. And, you know, I, in my prayer time, I, I kind of asked God, you know, reveal to me where I need to be better. And that was it. It was lead your kids at home. The one thing I've always tried to focus on was loving my wife and, you know, really modeling that first and foremost. But uh, God really revealed to me that I needed to do some more, you know, very applicable things, you know, with um, 
teaching them the word and, and things like that. And it's funny because just tonight we started doing some right now media stuff. Um, great resource that, you know, that they can watch and they can relate to. And then it, it naturally led into some questions, you know, so yeah, we just took 20, 25 minutes, but I'm glad you asked me that because in church, you can hold me accountable to that because that's an area that I definitely uh, have had to, um, you know, be more diligent about. Absolutely. And, and I appreciate you bringing right now media up. I hear it so much. I use it personally, but yes, I need to start pouring that into my, uh, you know, what do we have a 10, a seven and a three. So we're, we're real close. Yeah, to we're close. Yeah, absolutely. No yeah. doubt about it. Get eight, five and 21 months. So, um, it's, uh, it stays busy. <laughs> I could imagine. I could imagine. Well, Hey, let's get into, let me pull these up real quick. So this is kind of our, our rapid fire. And if you need to add some books to this or add some quotes, I mean, feel free. We're just kind of having fun here and just kind of open-minded, but let's do rapid fire. Number one, favorite book. Um, you know, obviously the Bible, but, uh, outside of that, it's, uh, Bill Hypel Simplify. I just read it last year. It really helps you stay focused and intentional and diligent about the things that matter. It's so easy to say yes to so many things, um, as I got to be, you know, aware of. But that was a great one that really helped me just focus in on the things that really matter. Awesome. awesome. How about favorite How about, quote? Uh, got it from Coach Rogers. Heard it every day for four years. My high school football coach. Every day you get better or worse. And I, I've really tried to make that my what I live by as a husband and a father. I firmly believe Coach Rogers used to say this every day. You never stay the same as a football player. I don't think you stay the same as a dad or a husband. I think you either get better or worse. And I just try to do that every day. Wow, that's a great oh, one. Great. Better or worse, love it. Favorite husband moment? Um, yeah, I think. One of the most memorable days we had was uh, I, I took Amy to actually Fort Clinch and we just hung out for, you know, a few hours. And I made these 20 questions and just said, where do we want to be in five years? Where do we want to be in 10 years? And just tried to have some fun with it. You know, I'm a firm believer in you got to keep things creative. I mean, it's tough parenting and stuff like that. But that's probably if you ask her, that's the most memorable day we've had as a couple. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And is that, would that be at like Dave Ramsey's questions? Sort of no, kind of? no, no. It okay. was just, uh, you know, it was just all, you know, what's the, if you could make a date, what would it be? And just taking some time to try to learn her, you know, what, yeah. what are the things that I do that, you know, really mean the most to you? Um, you know, we talked about things we want to do with our kids. Uh, we talked about what is the strengths we see in each kid. Just stuff that, <laughs> in the chaos of parenting, you hardly ever get a chance to talk about. So we try to do that. I try to do that twice a year at least, is just take a day. Beautiful. All right, how about this? Now you, now you got three, so you can, you can do three different ones. Or favorite dad moment? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think, you know, having Holland, our daughter, and going through the adoption process the last year was just – my favorite moments are like tonight when I'm sitting in a recliner and I got all three of them crawled up on me. I think, I think favorite dad moments are those little things. Cause to me it's in speaking with the, the guys that I speak to, those are the things we're going to miss. Um, it's just those little moments like that when they don't want to crawl up in your lap no more. And they don't want to, you know, as they enter those teenage years. So I think I try to create those moments with uh, one of my, my favorite things is when my daughter gets up at 2.33 in the morning, just holding her and rocking and watching her and just, you know, thinking of the blessing that uh, we've been given with having three of them. Awesome. awesome. I love to share a lot share of the, uh, my 90 year old deathbed, uh, talk. Right. Yes. And I had this conversation with a friend today and, uh, you know, husband's working 16, 20 hours a day, wow. traveling like crazy, three young kids. And, you know, I, I, I had asked her, I said, you know, of course, I'm going to pray for you. I said, you know, what's, what's, you know, God knows, I mean, our days are numbered. We don't know, but you know, yeah, what if, I mean, I just lost a good friend of ours from Fernandina Beach Hockey, you know, 40, 48 years old and I'm mm -hmm. 50. So that's kind of a wake up call, but you know, 90 years old, granted we make it there, but you know, what's, what's that conversation going to be like, or is it going to be full of regrets? Is it going to be like, man, I, I'm glad I, 
I just smoked that corporate ladder and, you know, the millions and, and the cars and the houses, or is it going to be, you know, three, three 30 in the morning, you know, holding my little girl yeah. or the skin knees or the, uh, you know, the fall or Cheerios on the nose, I, you know, puke. I, I mean, I have so many crazy and, yeah, and I've been blessed from working, working from home, but it's also been a little of a, of a financial struggle too. But you know, going through, you know, it took me 38 years to find my wife. And, you know, I had the ups and down where I was making a ton of money in real estate, got wiped out. But I look back at all that. And for what my wife gave me with the three children and my awesome wife, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it. I mean, I don't care how much money you can dump on my lap at one time, you know, and like I said, when we're in a group of men, I, I'm a I'm big fan of like, you're 90 years old, you're sitting back, what's your story going to be like? Absolutely. Freaks a lot yeah. of guys out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I've never heard anybody say, well, I just spent too much time with my wife or I just spent too much time with my kids. You know, you never hear anybody say that. So yeah. I think it's one of those things that is tough, you know, with me being in a career change in the last two years that I've definitely had to find balance. But yeah, I just I never get time back. Um, you know, so that's one of those things I try to stay intentional about. Absolutely. And that's huge. And it, it's almost like, you know, we, when we get to a point, I'm not a big, that's why I'm in kids ministry, just to let you know that, you know, I'm not a big fan of growing up, you know, right. we're all children of God. It doesn't say anything about adults of God. And you probably right. know the Bible better than me, unless it does say that in there. I don't think it does. <laughs> I haven't but, seen it either. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we get to that point and it's just like, you know, I see my friends and just like, they're so... Uh, can I say corporate? -y? Is that a word? Yeah. You know, so corporate -y and just like, and, and then all of a sudden the interaction is dwindling with their family and, you know, I'll see them at the park and I'll see them at events. It's like, you know, we showed up at vacation Bible school tonight, to, you know, to pick up my kids and I'm like, hey, praise and worship to them, man. Let's get up there. And I'm like watching everybody Absolutely. else all freaking out. So, and I know maybe I've been there, done that, but I, I don't want to judge and, Man, you got to have fun with your kids. You got to love their kids, man. Like you said, all of a sudden, boom, they're in their teens. Way too big to cuddle with. Right. I'm yep. going to cuddle with my, my kids as, as, to 20 years old as long as I can hold them. Oh, I'm on. I told my boys. <laughs> I tell them now. I'm like, listen, when you're 21, 22, 25, I'm still going to kiss you. So, you Amen. know, you just better deal with it. Um, but, man, Ray, yeah, I love watching you. And we had the, uh, the, the kids – you know, when we have the big service with the kids and you're up there jumping around and, you know, so I, I have admiration for you in that aspect. So. I don't know what it is, man, but that's uh, that's all guy driven, man. Love it. And, uh, you know, people think I'm a little nuts, but it's all for, uh, all for a beautiful heavenly father. Amen. No doubt about it. All right, let's get to this last question. Then I will ask if you're okay with uh, your daughter and adoption after this last question. Yeah, Since you did yeah, bring absolutely. it up, that, that would be great. All right. Can you give us one piece of awesome game-changing advice uh, that you can share with our listeners today? And I'm going to be honest with you, dude. You gave us a handful. If you say pass, I am totally cool with that. Oh, no. It's, uh, you know, this is just the things that I try to do. I'm not. But one of the things that I, I, I got from Daryl Sutherland when I worked with him at Bartram Trail was, you know, if you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. And if you're not intentional about it, it's not going to happen. And one of the things I do in my planner is I always write, um, you know, husband and father. And I always say, okay, what am I going to do for my wife this week? What am I going to do for my kids this week? Um, and I look, I'm not going to sit here and say every week I get to it because I don't. But at least if I have it and I write it down, I get to it more times than I don't. So be intentional with those things. It's easy to get caught up in the corporate you know, uh, run around and things like that. Listen, I'm a financial advisor. You know what they say makes a great financial advisor is how much money you make. Well, that's not how I do things. You know, it's about relationships and it starts at home. So. Absolutely. And for me watching you and your family, you're doing an incredible job big time. Well, I appreciate it. It helps having guys like, you know, you and Brian in the ministry. I'm a firm believer in it. It takes a village to raise a warrior. So I'm trying to surround mine with the village. So <laughs> Amen, brother. And you keep doing what you're doing. We'll, uh, we'll battle together, you know? I so, appreciate so, it. So let's talk about uh, Holland a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, just give us, give us her story in a, you know, in a quick, uh, quick little yeah, snapshot. Um, so just the adoption process, we, we 
Wheelis when I was coaching um, for a period of six months to stay to two years. And uh, so we always knew we were going to adopt. It was just a matter of when and things like that. And we, I told my wife during, it was the end of football season. I told my wife, I said, Hey, we really need to you know sit down and talk about adoption. And that Sunday we walked into church, it was orphan Sunday. And it was like, we just both heard God say, move now. So we went through the process and we never, we didn't have a, well, we're going to do international, we're going to do domestic. It was just, all right, God, we'll know. And my wife works our uh, special needs Christmas party at our church that we do. And she called me, I'll never forget it. She said, hey, I think I just met our daughter. And from there, it was just all God moving. It was, uh, we, we started getting her once a week. We built a relationship with her then foster family and it just kind of moved pretty quick from there. So, and, and we're still in the stage of permanent guardianship, but it, uh, you know, things look very, very bright as, as things move forward. There's just some circumstances that are holding it there right now, but you know, we're, we're just taking each step one day at a time. Absolutely. And letting God take the lead. Absolutely love that. And uh, yeah, I was hoping you would bring that up toward the end of the conference. I wasn't sure if you wanted to share that or not. Oh yeah, no, not uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that is awesome. I remember hearing your, I think maybe the first year we were here, uh, maybe it was last year, uh, conversation through church or they had a video or something with the adoption Sunday and all that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was pretty, in pretty incredible. Well, let's take yeah, it. She's let's a blessing. She is a, uh, she's a, She's a daddy's girl. <laughs> amen. Amen. I love seeing the pictures on Facebook and keeping up with y'all. Well, Travis, I greatly appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, man, what a blessing to everyone out there on Game Changing Dads. We are going to end on that note. Hopefully you can join us next Tuesday and uh, we will be here. Y'all have a great night and God bless.